Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a database, use related tables and conditional formatting to highlight fields. As you can see on the screen there, I've got a discrepancy column where the 12 is in green and the minus 66 is in red. So I want to show you how to do that and that's a subform. So this is a basic intro to access session so hopefully you'll be able to follow through what i do and then i'll build this database up going forward but just have a quick look at what we've got so far i'll close this form down three tables hours worked so you've got um, staff id project id and planned hours on a project and then actual and then a calculated field giving you those scores on the doors then if I close that one down, you've got a table called projects, which is just listing the projects you're doing. And at a later date, I'll add in some start and finish date and some budget information. But for now, I just want it as it is there. And then if I close that one down, a table with just staff, uh, simple information. And again, you could add address details to that later on if you want to. Now, if I close that down, then I've created a form called hours work. So that is a form in data sheet mode so you can do conditional formatting on it which is what I've done there and then I've used that form to form part of this form this is it there look a sub form within this form projects and you can just navigate through like that and you can see the scores on the doors for each project hours planned against hours actual worked and there's a discrepancy field so what I want to do is create a brand new database and just replicate what I've done here. So if I close that one down and then go get myself a blank database. So blank database. So I'll call this workforce one because I've already called that one workforce and I'll create it. And then when you create a database first time, you get a default table, which is setting you on the course of filling in the columns like you would in Excel, just start typing basically straight away. But I usually advise people to go into design and sort the thing out yourself. So ask you to name it. So the first one I'm going to do is a simple one, TBL staff. That'll do. That's the staff one. And then we're going to design. It's automatically got on a primary key, which is a unique identifier. So instead of just ID, I want that to say staff ID staff ID and as I add new members of staff that number will increment so then I'm just going to have as I did in the other one first name and surname and it will default to short text which is what I want and that's all I want for this one so I can just save this and let's go and put two people in a eh? so if I put myself in like I did on the other one Steve Saxton tab down and Dave Tab Jones. There's my two people, and you can add as many as you need. Close that one down. Now I want to create a new table. So you go to Create Table and Design. So if you go, if you go for that option, it's just going to give you the same option you would have had when you started the database. This is the one I want. So this is now going to be the project table. So we need project ID. And I want that to be an auto number. So I've tabbed across, I'm pressing A and it'll default to auto number. Then I'm coming down and back. And then this is just going to be project name. And this can just be short text like so. And this needs to be set as a primary key. So I'll click on that one and click the little key symbol. That sets that as a primary key. Save that one. And I'm going to call this TBL projects. TBL projects, it's OK, and then let's just add two projects. So we add HMRC as a project and Bank of England as a project. So that's all I want for this one. Close that one down. And then the third table, if we go back to create, is the hours back in design, the hours work table. So I want hours worked as the primary key. Now I'm typing it with capital letters when there's a separate word, if you noticed, when there's no space, and that's just the way um, Access likes it. And then this one wants to be auto number, so I'm typing A. 
So then we've got, we need to link in the other two tables. So I need a staff ID field, which needs to be a number field. And I need to have project ID, which also needs to be a number field. So then we're going for the rest of this. So planned hours, number field. And then we've got actual hours, which is also a number field. And now we want a calculated field because we want discrepancy. Discrepancy, tabbing across, typing CA to go to calculated, pressing enter, and it comes up with the expression builder. So when you go into the expression builder, you've got the the fields that's in this table, and at the moment it's not showing me anything because I'm still on that actual record. So if I come off this and go down the bottom, I can type the same sort of thing. Now, sometimes uh, when you go into a table and add a calculated field, it automatically comes up with all the fields, but it didn't happen for me then. So I'm going to do it down here. So I click on the expression builder, it still isn't showing me what I want to see. So I know what I need to type, so I'm just going to type it myself. So basically what I want to do is, is planned hours uh, minus actual hours. So if you're referring to a field in Access, you need a square bracket to start with. So square bracket, planned hours, close square bracket, minus, open square bracket, actual hours. And then hopefully I've spelled that right. OK. And then... What we need to do is have a quick look to see if that's worked. So it's going to ask us to save this. In fact, before I do that, that needs to be a primary key. Primary key. Then we save it. And we're going to call this TBL hours worked. That's the naming convention for tables. And then we can have a quick look. Everything's zero. You know, and then this will be a calculated field once you start adding things in. Now, on this staff ID and the project ID, I need to do a lookup field because I can't actually see who that is. And um, we haven't actually done any relationships yet, but I'm just going to close this down and go to the database tools and select relationships. And then just add each of these tables in. You can do it like this, or you can click add table. It doesn't really matter. So we've got staff ID and staff ID. So one member of staff can do many hours. And then I want this to be enforced referential integrity. It's a one to many link. That means you can't basically create a member of staff in this table if they don't exist in that table. That's what that's going to do. Create. And then you just make this nice and neat so you can see. You can see everything. And then you've got project to project. Same thing. Enforce. Create. So we've created our links. Save. Now the downside to this is if I've forgotten to do something, I've got to break these links and f add things and then remake these links. But that doesn't matter if that happens. It happens all the time. Don't worry too much when you're just testing this. So now in hours worked, I'm going to right click on that and go into design. And I want to do a lookup on this. So lookup wizard. You can't change the data type of this field as part of one. There you go, look. So it's coming up with that. And that's because I should have done the lookup first. Which, in fact, it actually does create a lookup. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'll go back into relationships. Let's just break these off. Um, and we'll do it again. So you can just delete those. And then delete those. Now, save that. Just leave them there because I'm going to reset them in a minute. Close that and then go back into design, right click, design view. Now it will let me do the lookup wizard. Lookup wizard. I want to look up a field to get the value from another table. Yeah, I do. So this is staff ID. So I want the table staff next. I'm bringing all the fields across. Um, in fact, let's just take that one back because I want it that way around. Surname, first name. Not bothered about it being sorted. So that's going to, it hides the ID field. It's just going to put that information in the table. But I'll better see that as well if it's a similar name. 
and then I'll leave it as staff ID and finish. Save. So I've done that one. And then I'll do the same for projects. I want to do a lookup wizard for projects. Next. So this is projects. Next. Um, bring it across. Select. Next. Hide. That's what I want to see. Next. I should have ticked this in the other one, but I'll do. I'll go back and do it in in um, the table database tools area. But I'll tick that one on this one so you can see what happens. And then finish. Yep. So if I close that for now, and then I go into database tools and relationships, you can see the tick has made this. If I just double click on this line, it's, it's basically ticked enforce referential integrity. Okay, but on this one it hasn't because I forgot to tick it, but that doesn't matter because I can come back in here and tick it now. Okay, so all good. Save that, close the link. So now let's create a project. If I go into hours work, staff ID, I'll select Saxton and project, I'll select HMRC. And let's say we planned 24 hours. And then I actually did 30 hours. You can see how it's coming up with a discrepancy of minus six. And then let's do another project for the Bank of England. Let's say Jones does it. Bank of England. Okay, we planned 30 hours. Uh, we did 20 hours, say. So that's going to be okay. 10 hours spare. So that's how that works. Now, if I close this down, what you'd want to do is create a form that's going to um, show you this information so if i click on projects and uh, go create a form let's see what the default does so the default gives us the projects and lists the hours work underneath but i, I mentioned in the beginning that i want to show this in, in a color i want to color this up so if i click onto this and go to format conditional formatting is what i want to use but it's grayed out so i'm just going to leave this um, as it is for the moment and create a in fact am i yeah i'm going to leave it as it is i'll just close it and save it yes i'll call it frm it's a form looking at the table projects and then i'll come back and edit this in a minute because i want to create a second form so Create form, and this time I'm going to go to more forms. In fact, it's going to be how it's worked actually. More forms, data sheet. Now, when you click to click on data sheet, it looks exactly the same as a table, but you'll notice that this is now active, whereas before it wasn't active. So if I highlight that column, I can go into conditional formatting, new rule, and if I just go back one. I'll just do that again it's on that column look new rule so check values in the current record yep so this one if it's going to be greater than zero greater than or equals to zero that's okay isn't it discrepancy it's going to be good so i'll go green oh. Put zero in there, go green. Okay. So we've saved 10 hours there, so that's good. I'll apply that, see what happens. Yeah, it's gone green. Now I want, to, I want that one to go red. So new rule. If it's less than, I better put less than zero actually. I'll just, less than zero. Format red. okay okay so that's gone red now if i save this form even though it looks like a table if i just save this and put that frm in front of that okay and then close this down so now this table this bit here which is just the table itself um hours work table with no formatting on it i don't want this now i want this other one this one to be embedded in the projects form. So if I go into design on this one, click 
click on that that's the, that's the sub form get rid of that now under form design at the top there you've got some tools lots of tools the one of them says sub form sub report that's the one I want it allows you to draw a rectangle or a shape and the wizard will start and you can select the form that you've already done which is that one I'll go next it picks up the relationship so for each record use project ID next I'll leave it as that finish and then have a quick look at that before I save it and then you get the the form now if I if I go um, let's say that Jones came and worked on this and he was doing 10 hours and he worked um, five hours that's there going to be on there and if I go to the next record you can see that I'll put Saxton on this he was working 20 hours planned he actually did 30 hours so that's say what what whoops should go red minus 10 so we've only got two projects and we've only got two records there but you can see how that works now this needs tidying up a little bit and it's easy enough to do you just go back into design and if you don't want that to be there you can just delete that off move the whole table to where you want it um not like that that was a bit of a mistake okay what's happening here is i've got the if we go to arrange i've got the automatic layout on so I'll remove that let me just undo this because i didn't mean to do that so if i remove layout i don't know what that is there. let's get rid of that and then click on this table so it's quite hard to get these tables if i click on the that's what you need a little orange bar around it and then you can move that so i've still got this auto layout on there remove and then i can um, then maybe just highlight that um stacked no i don't want it to be stacked undo 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 so i'm going to click the form remove layout away try that again so the layout is great sometimes and then sometimes it isn't great as you can see there it's just messing me about a little bit now I've got to try and get this little orange shape around so I can just widen that and narrow it maybe depends how many projects you're going to do of course bring this up and then have a look form design have a look okay I'm okay with that one need to change the title so I'll go back down to design so this is just going to be projects so get rid of the TBL bits because that's what it picked up from the name form TBL projects save that have a look so now this is how you would be working this project you would just be in this creating a member of staff or selecting a member of staff selecting a um, the hours planned and the actual hours and then it would just work so like i said at the beginning and the next session i'll probably add a few extra fields into these tables so we can look at dates and money budget information so in the project table i'll probably put some budgets against the project or even in maybe another calculated field so we've got a budget figure and they did 24 hours so a budget figure was 24 times 200 say pound 200 pound a day or an hour and then what the cost was and then the discrepancy wouldn't just be the hours it would also be the budget but that's for another day but hopefully this has got you going and this is uh, set the scene for how access works we haven't done any reports or queries yet and that's to come but hopefully um, this is uh, getting you interested in to, how to use access and uh, thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.